معرفة الله أكبر Time to break the fast. Bismillah. Mmm, this is really delicious. Let us go for the Maghrib prayers. Peter, make yourself comfortable. We'll be back in a short while. Peter, this may be the first time you are here in Ramadan. Oh, yes, I'm really enjoying it. Thanks to Hassan for inviting me. Hey Ali, have you paid your zakat? No, not yet. I have to calculate my zakat. Hey, uh, Hassam, sorry to interrupt you. What is zakat? Zakat is one of the five pillars of Islam. You will be surprised that the Quran talks about zakat in more than 30 different verses. The giving of zakat is considered a means of purifying one's wealth and soul. And according to one of the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, refusal to pay zakat is a sign of hypocrisy and God will not accept the prayers of such people. You will be amazed to know that today, at the low end of the estimate, the annual zakat distributed globally is 15 times more than global humanitarian aid contribution. Peter, zakat is expected to be paid by all Muslims who have the financial means. Apart from this, Muslims are also encouraged to make voluntary contributions. Zakat is considered as the right of the poor on the wealth of the rich. Hence, by paying zakat, the due share of the poor is given to them. So, how much do you pay? The one whose wealth exceeds a certain minimum level has to pay zakat. And this minimum level is called nisab. Zakat has to be paid on capital assets, agricultural goods, gold and silver, extractions from under earth, whether metals or non-metals, and livestock at a rate varying between 2.5% to 20% depending on the type of wealth. When shall one pay zakat? Zakat is paid annually as per the lunar calendar. But the most important thing is that you should be owner of wealth for one year. Is it not difficult to keep the record of passage one year in ownership on different kinds of wealth? Good question. To overcome this difficulty, Sharia scholars have advised that whenever an individual or corporate calculates its zakat, it should take into account the different kinds of wealth it has in ownership at that point in time. For example, if I have received cash last month and I am calculating my zakat this month, even though one year has not passed on the ownership of cash, still I can include the cash to calculate my zakat. Hassam, how do you guys calculate zakat? Okay, let me explain to you. Suppose the value of the capital assets like cash, sukuk, sharia compliant shares, etc., exceed beyond the value of 85 grams of pure gold, then you have to pay zakat at the rate of 2.5%. The same applies to precious metals. For extractions from under earth, whether metals or non-metals, you have to pay zakat at the rate of 20%. Peter, in case of companies, a zakat of 2.5% is to be paid on the value of the capital assets precious metals, if any, and raw materials, and the goods in the inventory as well. Do you know, Peter, even farmers have to pay zakat on the livestock and agricultural produce? Hmm. Like camels, cows, and sheep. Now, if a farmer owns five to nine camels, then he needs to give one goat as zakat. The quantity limit varies for cows and sheep. If the farmer produces anything which is more than 653 kilograms, then zakat needs to be paid. On non-irrigated land watered by rain, 10% of the produce needs to be paid. On irrigated land, 5% of produce is to be paid. Do you also pay zakat on personal assets like house, vehicle, clothing, furniture, etc.? No, Peter, we do not have to pay zakat on these items. But if you have a land 
and you have rented, then you have to pay zakat on the rent received. If the purpose of the land is to sell, then the zakat is paid on the value of the land. I would like to add something here. Today, in most Muslim countries, zakat is collected through a decentralized and voluntary system. Under this system, zakat committees are established, which are tasked with the collection and distribution of zakat funds. Now, you must be wondering who the recipients of zakat are. According to the Holy Quran, chapter number 9 and verse 60, zakat is paid to the poor, to the needy, to those employed to collect and manage the zakat fund, to those whose hearts are being reconciled, to free the captives, to those who are in debt for personal reasons, to those who are working in the cause of Allah, and to travelers who are in need of financial assistance. We need to also explain, Peter, about waqf. Yes, you are right. Let me explain. Waqf means preventing something from movement. And in its applicable form, waqf is the confinement of property from the ownership and the dedication of its benefits to charitable purposes or for the benefits of one's family members. Is it similar to a trust? Yes, you are right. But the institution of waqf has its origin long before the origin of the concept of trust. Waqf was originated and developed by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, during 7th century AD. Do you know that a waqf property is irrevocable, which means that it cannot be revoked once it is declared as waqf. It is perpetual, which means that it will continuously exist once it is created. And it is inalienable, which means that it is not subjected to any sale or transfer or disposal. Uh, can you explain to me the mechanism of waqf? Any individual or a group can declare their property as waqf. A manager is appointed to manage this property. The income derived from such property is used for the benefit of those for whom the waqf is made. To add further, there are four types of waqf. First is the charitable waqf, in which the derived income is dedicated for a charitable purpose. Second is the family waqf, in which the derived income is reserved for family members. Third is the joint waqf, in which the derived income is donated to the family, as well as charitable purposes. And fourth is the self-dedicated waqf, in which the derived income is retained by the donor as long as he or she is alive. Let me conclude this with the prophets, peace be upon him, saying, Do you know what he said, Peter? Every good deed is a charity. Hmm, I think zakat indeed is one of the great pillars of Islam to address poverty on one hand and develop generosity on the other. So Peter, how has been your stay here? When can we expect you again? I will be travelling the day after tomorrow, and the stay has been quite enjoyable and pleasant. Come, let's go for the prayers. <laughs>